So Adam, thank you so much for joining us again today. Um, the, I know that I and the, the graduates all really value these sessions and have found them very, very inspirational. Um, who wants to go first today? Okay, I'll, I'll go first. Good. Uh, I just need to find it. So I have been exploring a bit of Scandinavian architecture. With my mood board, I realized there was a certain red color that kept coming up. So I wanted to take the windows of these really cute summer houses and I decided to make a print from it. So this is a result of some laser cut MDF. And I had tried with some lino, but I had some technical difficulties with both the file and the material. So it's been a steep learning curve. And it's a bit uh, last minute, but I think after I've printed my swatches today, I might want to go further into layering up these with these MDF uh, lino cuts. So I thought for more upholstery and also for wallpapers, but because I'm, I haven't quite removed the errors and things like that. I didn't quite get around to visualizing um, the, the wallpaper. But uh, unfortunately, it's a very short presentation today. But that's what I, I have. That's okay. Love the sofa. Mm. Yeah. Adam, over to you. Yeah, um, I really like the, um, the element that you've picked out, Sarah, which is the windows. Because it's when it when you put it into a print, it you have to look closely to realise that's what it is. It it becomes mm -hmm. sort of it almost just becomes like a it's almost like your geometric brief it just becomes a geometric, which is quite nice. Yeah, um, and it's nice to see that you've retained that texture. It looks like a lino cut texture, mm -hmm. uh, which is nice. It also is a bit the one on the left is almost reminds me of lace. Mm. That could be a cool idea if if you if you've got a laser cutter, you could. Um, laser cut it out on fabric and almost create, mm -hmm. create lace from it which would be quite ah, cool yeah. you'd have to be careful with the scale of it because if you make it too big the clever thing about lace is it's all it, it keeps its pattern but it holds itself together it has a structure because of the way it's constructed so it, yeah depending on where the gaps are and how big the gaps are in this if you made it too big it wouldn't have any structural integrity and it would drop to bits but yeah if it was the right scale it would it would be really cool mm-hmm um the little print you mentioned there's some like joining errors in it um i actually in i think in the last brief i talked about being clever with repeats and not making it look like you've done a repeat you know by um not making it look like you've just filled in the gaps uh, whereas this i'm going to almost take back what i said because these little repeat faults make it look like a an original block print or a, a lino print where you place them physically by mm -hmm. hand on the on the on the on the substrate and it's really nice it actually works really well it's it adds to the charm so mm -hmm. i actually don't think they look like print faults in this i think they look deliberate and what we end up doing here quite a lot is um replicating that so we look at block prints and wood um and lino prints and we actually try really hard to make them look like this <laughs> so it's quite it's quite ironic that you were disappointed with it but actually it's it, it really adds to that print um oh, cool. so yeah, yeah just tell everyone it's on purpose and it'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll do yeah the only other note I, I made was um on your sofa yeah um if you could yeah i think it's maybe possibly just the element that's showing um but i would say that that print out of the two is directional so for me, that's the wrong way on the sofa. Because, oh, yeah. Because they're rectangles, they're sort of that way. They, I want it to run the other way up. So it, it, wants, right. it wants a 90 degree rotation, whereas your other print, the one that could be a lace, um, is not as directional, so that it doesn't matter. Yeah. So again, it's just, think, I think the scale's nice. Um, we talked about scale in the earlier sessions, like that's a really, really bold jump from your cushion to your sofa and it works the scale is fine that it can survive at that scale but it's for me it's the wrong way around yeah yeah it, it was actually a directional the, print yeah that I, I totally see that now uh it was the first time i've done a half drop in repeat like this so it was yeah it was definitely a good learning curve yeah, yeah. i mean if you it 
again it's it, it's a really nice sort of print but I, even when it's sat there like that i think to turn your head 90 degrees it works better it goes yeah. that way it goes that way yeah yeah just because yeah, of right. just because of those big dominant motifs with the diamonds in there you're sort of you know if that was a if that was upholstery um you'd scale it so you had you know one of those in the center of a chair back and uh -huh. it go it does go that way chair backs are sort of long and thin and that motif needs to go that way yeah but if you hadn't put it on the sofa i wouldn't i wouldn't make that comment <laughs> but it's because it was yeah. visualized on the sofa it makes you think it's always thinking about what you're going to stick it on um, and where it's going to even wallpaper wallpaper you know vertical runs i think it would be better yeah. than the way up that's that's super helpful that yeah i'll definitely do that Thank but the, re the repeat joint thing i think in this is is really nice and you could even engineer a few more into it because um, <laughs> i think that it's yeah i think it gives it that sort of hand done look yeah. which is nice when, when everything's so digital it's because yeah. they're not yes yeah, because they don't look like pixel faults because they're literally off center as well yeah so yeah they're not sure you know it doesn't look like you've got a gap between a, a perfect vertical they're actually slightly especially if you look in the middle to that the one on the the yeah it's kind of almost middle left it's actually offset a little bit so it adds to the whole thing yeah mm -hmm. it, it does look like you've had a physical i mean you probably have had a physical lino and you've placed it and placed the next one just slightly off um which yeah. is it's just added to the character so really i have nice. the boards here actually so, so it was uh laser cut onto okay yeah, yeah. yeah. nice but it actually worked really well. I wasn't expecting it to, yeah. to come out like a proper woodblock print, but it did. For those in themselves, that you know, you use those as a tool to, to print something, but they would be really nice as um, panels. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you get that you get acoustic paneling or um, window shutters or things like that. It would it would be that's what they're all coming back on the window shutters. So mm -hmm. that would be a really cool application of that. There you go, yeah. Sarah. With, with the help of technology, you start a new trend. Laser cut block prints. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. So um, for, the, for my approach on architecture, I kind of decided to look at war-torn cities. And rather than looking at like buildings as a whole and the shapes from them, I was kind of going to go for like the shapes and textures found within the broken down walls and like the rubble left on the floor, the missing windows and things like that. Um, and then I was also going to mainly focus on like mark making and mixed media with torn papers and stuff like that. Um, so then I was also looking at some trend research just to kind of look at the direction I wanted to take my project in. Yeah, so then, so this is my mood board that I spoke about a couple of times on the left. Um, and then I was also looking at inspiration um, from other designers and stuff and how they're using these like um, abstract textures as like wall coverings, like carpets and things like that. Um, and the different like medias I could work in. So like I wanted to mainly focus on ink, which you can see on the right hand side, where I was kind of using different materials that kind of resembled um, some of the things in the images I was looking at. So I was using corrugated cardboard and kind of tearing it apart and using it to um, print with, with ink. And then I was also kind of creating these like broken bricks with like the holes from the windows and different things like that and then we're gonna flip straight to some prints I think so then I kind of I've just focused on one print mainly so far and kind of just explored different ways around um different colorways and pulling different parts um from the image um so I've got these colorways and then these ones um in different parts of the lines and then the applications for these so far is thinking tiles. So I'm going to, well, I'm able to print directly onto tiles here. So I'm going to do that and create a series of um, tiles. And then also going to look at flooring um, and carpets, like stair runners and things like that. And then hopefully if when I come back to this project and we've got more time, explore it for like a street style um, collection as well. Because I think that if I develop more prints from my original inspiration, it could work really well for fashion. It's great. When you do the flooring prints, Evie, you're going to get some 3D going on in there. So you create UV gel kind of prints and you build the lacquer. So you get loads and loads of texture going on. I literally recreate that textured feel with the visual. Yeah, I'll, um, well, I'll, I'll speak to the technicians here and see what's achievable on different things. and Perfect. Different 
Great. Mm. Over to you, Adam. Yeah, they're really nice, Evie. Um, Thank you. I think um, for me, if we, can we go back to your the mood board, which has got yeah. the images from the pianist on? Yeah. There we go. So what's mm -hmm. really nice about that mood board on the left is you. Mm -hmm. Everything's obviously little snapshots, but then you've gone in and you've sort of done a bit of um, a bit of like collage in. So in that bottom left, you've got that section of wall that's got a nice, a nice organic line around it, and then you've got your slabs of what look like slate or shale that've got. You've sort of mm -hmm. picked out that it has a that has an uneven outline, and then up in the top, you've got some mark making that's got a really geometric outline around it. Mm -hmm. And then you go to your prints on the right, which are your artworks, which are really amazing and textured. And there's loads of there's loads of marks there and loads of layering possibilities. I think you could introduce some of that, what you've done, picking out the lines and the collage. And mm -hmm. so instead of this all being square tiles, because I think that has led you into then thinking about tiles. I think if mm -hmm. this right right hand mood board was had some of that interest, those broken, you know, as if you'd torn each picture out instead yeah. of just put in an image um because they're all really textured but then they're very uniform in they're just sort of um thumbnails mm -hmm. so that that sort of outline yeah. if you like or silhouette would work really well with with mm -hmm. those prints and then i think in the prints themselves when you develop them into designs so if you can flick to your design mm -hmm. this i mean this is lovely it almost reminds me of um heart monitors you know like um like, like a <laughs> yeah pump. i know what you mean like the up and down yeah it's really really cool and this depending on which way you've done it there's there's loads of different possibilities i think the one in the middle for me is it's the most successful because it's it's yeah. textural and it's um tonal as well you've got you've got mm -hmm. line work that's got multiple colors in um and it's very sort of for me that's a, a very apparel style print mm -hmm. but then when you're talking about tiles and flooring Mm -hmm. you know you can do really cool things like debbie said with layering up and textures and if you if you you know if you go down there i know you're printing but when you think about ceramics yeah. what's nice about ceramics is you can put glazes and crackles and textures and mm -hmm. and all that in it i think this has got the potential to be layered up because mm -hmm. yeah. it's got it's got really lovely it carries color really well and the actual the repeat on that's really lovely so mm -hmm. Thank you. when you look at that i can't I'm not picking out any any join-ins, any any side to side. It just runs really, really sort of pretty, um, even though it's quite a grungy thing. Quite, mm -hmm. and it's come from quite a grungy topic, which is like war torn buildings. But the print mm -hmm. itself is really lovely. But then I think the next step is to layer up and do sort of. You did collage. I it's collage yeah. on that first mood board. You collaged images together with with torn outlines and, and geometric outlines. Collage your prints up. You know, take a chunk out and stick it on top of another one. Even these three versions of the same print, you could layer them up and collage them up. Play with layer blending in Photoshop, and AVA does that really nicely as well. That 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 um, overprinting transparencies thing, where you can build up really interesting things by literally collaging. It's it's taking that age old cut and stick theory and doing it digitally and you can just build up such cool patterns because <laughs> i think your, your tiles are lovely yeah i think you've you've gone to tiles because for me almost subconsciously because everything is very straight and neat and you've gone well how can that straight and neat pattern go into a straight and neat yeah. but when actually it could be well it could it could be anything uh, you know you mentioned the fashion prints it could be that it mm -hmm. could be um it could be flooring it could be wallpaper um it could, I mean, the middle print for me is like, would be really cool on um, earthenware or, or like ceramics. Mm -hmm. Really cool. It's almost got a bit of a Denby feel to it. Yeah. You know? I don't know if you guys have got the facility to, to print on sub, dye sub onto um, ceramics, but that would be mm -hmm. quite a cool thing to explore. Yeah. yeah, you can, can't you? Evie, can yeah. you go back to your mood board? Because there is, if you remember right at the very beginning, we discussed that kind of collage element, didn't we? Yeah, we did. The, you talked about the image in the yeah, top middle kind of yes. area. Similar, whereabouts is it in that store? There it is. It's a uh, top left, yeah. isn't it? Kind of a quarter in. Mm. And it was like, yeah. um, what was so lovely about that, Adam, which you've picked up on, it was like layer after layer after layer of different textures, but kind of scrapbook style stripes of textures that are mm. all kind of wibbly wobbly and yeah, yeah. lots and lots mm. of 3D going on there. It's kind of, and I think one of the things that's so important commercially is that you are trying to create something that somebody wants to touch. 
Yes. All yeah. part of the sales process. It's like part of that. Mm -hmm. The colour's attractive. The print's yeah. attractive. You want to touch it. You know, and just as an age old, really, back from commercial life, if you, it's the same with photography, if you are producing a product that's then going to be in a packaging and you can get the customer to pick it up and look at it closer, you're moving mm -hmm. closer to completing the sale. It's all part of the subconscious attraction as that a commercial designer creates in every print that they do. So I'd, I'd really look forward to seeing that, Evie. It'd be really nice. Yeah, I think there's, from that initial mood board as well, there's so many different points of inspiration. I think I could, probably carry on with this project forever yeah. um, but there's definitely loads of bits I want to explore and the collage thing was something we had spoke about previously so I'll definitely mm. continue with that yeah I think I think your, your images on the right are just screaming out to be collaged and layered and like mm -hmm. Debbie's, Debbie's pointed out that really interesting image but another one that's interesting for me is sort of under the word architecture there's there looks yeah. like strips of corrugated looks like metal it could be i don't know yeah yeah corrugated metal but they're all laid in sort of different um yeah. arrangements so yeah. again because they are um perpendicular no, that's not the word parallel lines mm -hmm. um you want to lay them all in one direction but actually that what's nice everywhere and it's creating it's creating a different texture again so you've got mm -hmm. some corrugated things in your artwork you know if they were all sort of they almost look like strips of bark the way they've been like the way they've been cut out you could you could do that with those sort of jaggedly sort of cut them out and arrange yeah. them in all in all different ways and, and directions to give you a really sort of all over textural yeah, it's almost like kind of yeah. capturing urban decay isn't it in the textures that you've got which is lovely yeah it's like yeah. that that looks like you could see it on a scrap pile because it's yeah. someone's just yeah, dis yeah. discarded it and layered it up but not realising mm -hmm. that the layer that open it actually makes a really nice design. Yeah, it's you almost like, like rubbish. <laughs> yeah, you want to do that with the, you've got. I mean, I can't even count them. There's so many different print mark ideas on there. You could literally print them off on the on a photocopier, not even not even on anything fancy. Tear them up, chuck them on the floor, and that mm -hmm. would be a that would be a, another design. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Or pair ones together that you know are going to work well. Or or we talked in the last session about juxtaposing you know you've got that brick one which is like spongy bricks which is really sort of regular yeah. and then you've got a sort of perforated dotty one you know just try mix and match and you've got you've got there's there's a thousand different possibilities on that on that artwork board just from your from the pieces you've got there mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. really great and the colors really always great, your color is always really nice it's you sort of carry the color through from your mood board even mm -hmm. though these are sort of shades of sort of brown and grays and blacks there is sort of bluey tones in there and, and green hues which yeah. come from your mood board so it's nice to see you taking that all the way through to the final yeah. print which is i think it's really important you've got a natural yeah. eye for color evie yeah. and um, but that was one of the things they always said to me at uni actually <laughs> but i do enjoy the color side of things mm. as well yeah it's good to keep it in mind because i think it helps you it helps you with the mm -hmm. end product but again yeah. you can get you, you can get taken away by it like i think I think my, my one, it's not a criticism, but my main comment here is you've been, I think you've been drawn by the straight lines, by the, by mm -hmm. the, the frames. And I think that's, that's, that's maybe stopped you from doing the collage. And, but on the, yeah. on the flip side of that, you've, you've been taken away by your colour, which, which is a really good thing. Mm -hmm. So it's just being conscious of it, I think. I think yeah, it's being yeah. conscious of what you subconsciously do. If you find you're yeah. doing in, in <laughs> no. and grids, and it's like, why am I doing this? It's like, oh, because I laid my mood board out in squares and grids. You know, you mentioned yeah, about no, te te tearing paper, you know, do that, tear them all out, don't cut them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. That's all really great advice. Thank you. No problem. They're really great, Evie. Thanks. Mm, it's really so nice. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm showing you is kind of the PowerPoint that I was using to kind of gather ideas and things as I went along. And then I put kind of a more like finished section to it at the end. Um, so just before lockdown, I was lucky enough to um visit Paris so I thought I'd use um all the architecture that I took pictures of there um as inspiration for the for this project really because I've never had a chance to kind of use it as design inspiration um and there's so much there in terms of different um like architectural styles lots of art nouveau um different um like contrasting shapes and um different kind of geometric compositions there so this is my mood board that I put together um, and the colours that I selected out of it. Um, 
these are some kind of initial inspirations that I was looking at. So I was looking at how different kind of architectural geometrics were used in different kind of interior applications. And again here, um, what I quite liked about these is they're all really textural, um, different layers. Um, and they kind of almost look like they have different surface effects laid on top of them rather than just flat standard print. Um, Sarah actually told me about this um, company, Sarah Neat, that we work with. Um, but they do lots of really interesting um, wall covering textures for mainly um, commercial outputs. So really like high end, um, but kind of what, like what Debbie was talking about before, like we could do it with the UV layering. Um, and that's kind of how I'd like to go in the direction with the different samples that I produce. So I've collected lots of different shapes from the photos that I took. Um, and then started lino cutting um, by hand at first. And this is the kind of output that I gave. Um, and here is where I kind of combine that together with the different colours that I pulled out um, and the different shapes that the lino cutting created, just picked out parts of the buildings. Um, and then I did some tests on the laser cutter so I could get some more like complex lino cuts. Um, and it gave like, because it kind of melted the rubber a bit, it gave a really nice texture. And I've used those to create like an all over rhythm. Um, and I experimented with different ways of either using like the, the negative space or layering the print instead with the colour behind um, to like expose the pattern. Um, these are some kind of work in progress of just different like tests that I was doing with it, um, changing the rhythm and background as well as the different colours I was overlaying. Um, and some of the um, like um, lino prints that I did gave a really nice kind of stone texture when I inverted the colours, which is on the left. Um, so those are kind of parts of the lino cuts that I was doing and then also made into a, a sort of all over texture that I've used then to layer underneath the um the colors to um, when i deleted like where the pattern was to come through in like a stony texture to make it look kind of more more textured natural um and more tactile and then the more designed print on the right hand side to go with it um and then i just this is the only visualization that i've done so far but to kind of show it working like how i imagine it works working in like a high-end hospitality type commercial space. Um, I'd quite like to do some like separate out parts of the print and make it into like a like a wall feature panel as well, kind of mural type thing, um, the different colours and textures. But yeah, that's where I got to with this project at the moment. Wow, well, Kelly, I thought you'd I thought you said you'd lost a couple of weeks. <laughs> so that's like tons. <laughs> I put in a bit of extra time around. <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> just the odd five minutes. No, that wow, you've done absolutely tons of work. Um where do I start? Um Sorry. can we go can we yeah, let's let's whiz back to the to the early ones. Um I think your first block yeah. Yeah, so, so this so, is kind of where I started here. Yeah, so this is this is you just taking almost like snapshots out of out of the things that have inspired you um it's interesting that you've you picked up on i think i said in the last brief um or, or an earlier one about not necessarily looking at buildings looking at raw iron and and obviously the eiffel tower is the, a really good example of an ironwork structure it's you know it's architecture yeah but it's not a building as such is it um yeah. so these sort of um nouveau motifs are really nice so you've got like really you've got like three distinct things going on here you've got this block print which is really nice and it's sort of really kind of really art deco in a way um and charming and, and the way you know you can do lots of different things like you've done here you could you could put two different prints together so you've got your little squares and then your nouveau shapes and then you've got a one with just nouveau um which is a sort of simple really nice kind of you know you can imagine that on a really in soft colors on a linen um nice and distressed just looking really sort of natural um for me where you put the so let's go then to your more textural ones yeah um, um, yeah this so where you've where you laser cut the rubber uh, of the lino and it's created it's giving you that sort of melted um grungy sort of 
I mean, anybody, anybody else would probably look at that and go, "Oh my gosh, I've, what have I done?" But then you've went and printed with it, which is, I think you, I think you're totally mad. But it's actually <laughs> given a really, really cool effect, and you've you've got a really sort of graffiti, graffiti thing going on, a bit of an eighties thing going on. Which, when you look at the prints, you don't see those those melted vinyl blocks at all. They purely become a tool or a step in the process to get to these. So these, for me, are, are really successful. Oh, thank um, you. What what I was gonna gonna say before we flick to this is back on your uh, uh, well the images there actually where you've combined the very sort of stylized block prints with the graffiti it's too much. They're, mm -hmm. they're, for me they're two completely different directions. So that's really nice because all the shapes and the silhouettes are integrated into the texture and it looks like it looks like something's been put on a wall thirty years ago and it's been left in a in an abandoned building. It's just all degraded and, and and come away which is really nice when you then introduce the really clean block prints into it for me that's um it's too much it's too much going on so they're they're very separate things um on on the right the far right one yeah for me that's yeah, it, okay. it's just a step too far yeah it, you could probably pull it back if that if those little square ones were maybe in the same color as the nouveau ones and then it wouldn't look like too much but what you're getting there is you're getting runs in the horizontal so you're getting banding mm -hmm. and then you're getting you're getting a bit of a run in the vertical as well just because of your painterly texture um it's you know it's 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 an experiment it's you know it's it's cool but it, i think yeah be, no, con I be conscious of your two separate themes here and if you're going to put them together you it just needs to be a bit more sensitive with it but it's a it's a mad print it's really cool what's also interesting is that sort of paint um detail in the background it looks like the thing you did on your very first mood board yeah yeah that's that's what it's that from. sort of little color little color yeah. composition which is nice because you're looking at architecture you're looking at geometric shapes lines and um, buildings but then you did a little color experiment which is really loose uh which you wouldn't expect and then like 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 i said in evies you must have subconsciously just carried that through <laughs> used it in your print so it's, it is interesting to see that what you guys start with you do you can see it really clearly through your through your themes um so you've got your your gym your clean block prints and you've got your graffiti and then for me there's a third um sort of element to this which is that these ones on the left which look like um they look to me like those images that you showed of the relief um concrete the, the high-end wall coverings yeah and that yeah. that could be that couldn't it you could do yeah. some really cool layering it's and it's not a complicated print but once it's once it's a 3d product it wouldn't it wouldn't need to be and it could just be raw concrete um with no color on it and just the just the textures and shapes would do that um but yeah, you've got you've got you. It's nice to see you haven't combined that with anything else because I think that's special on its own.